Hello, hello, hello. This is Nightwatch Nate, Nate. Your host, your host, your host of the Nightwatch Podcast. Welcome to the Nightwatch Podcast. <laughs> How does this intro to the show this evening make you feel inside? I want you to get real with me now. Real with your inner self. Uh, Does this not inspire kind of a sense of dread? Um, Does it make you a little squeamish? Or is it just cringeworthy, I would probably go for the third option. Uh, nevertheless, this is a, you know, kind of a parody, to be honest, but uh, this is nevertheless how the president, um, and I'm a little late on this topic because, you know, I've been busy, so what can I say, but I thought I'd cover this topic because it was just fascinating to me, fascinating. To see, and when I first saw this, as probably many others did, you know, it blew up all over Twitter, you know, of course, as these things do. And uh, I couldn't at first quite believe my eyes. I thought something must have been, you know, these little meme generators out there continually, you know, bickering back and forth, left, right, sock puppets, bludgeoning each other to death on social media. Uh, I thought this was uh, just kind of a, a parody, right? Or, uh, you know, maybe they put a filter on it, shifted the hue a little bit to make it a little more menacing. But no, no. I mean, and, and I'll pull it up for you shortly here, but I went right to the source, right? Like, yeah, uh, ABC News here. Biden delivers speech on battle for the soul of the nation in Philadelphia. The soul of the nation. Right, guys? Uh, and, wouldn't you know it, that's actually uh, what it looked like. And so I had to cover this show. Because I, I actually wanted to, uh, you know, I started out with a question. How does that make you feel? And I'm sorry if this is distracting. But I'm just kind of curious how long this will stay on my forehead before it falls off. And it falls off. If it falls off midway through the show, that's fine. I'll just continue on. Either way, it's a it's a fashion statement. It's a fashion statement, right? I might start my own fashion line here shortly. Probably not, but... So this was the statement, the... Uh, And I wanted to get into the psychology behind this uh, speech. First and foremost, right? The thing that struck everyone and it became a meme and a a hashtag and, you know, the dark brand and the uh, Biden's red speech was kind of a a popular phrase in the days following. Now, everybody, of course, has gone off to the next shiny object and and it's not even in people's minds anymore even though it's only been you know just over a week but nevertheless i am here to be a watchman right not just a a parrot not just a, a little tweety bird on twitter i am here and i hope you're all listening intently right now as my face is radiating this pyramid powered light here I am here as a watchman I want to I don't want to just uh, promote this soundbite this uh, fleeting you know attention span 
method of information. I want to actually step back and think about things now and then. I think it's helpful. I think it's beneficial. It's It needs to be done, okay? So the first thing that uh, struck everybody was obviously this uh, Halloween-like red lighting in the background, right? And so my first question was, well, you know what? Um, I know that there is some psychology behind color, right? Um, There's a reason why fast food chains in particular, this just popped into my mind as an example, McDonald's, Burger King, right? Red, yellow, primarily red is their uh, popular color for marketing their product. And, uh, And I found a fascinating article here. I just started to read this. Right. First off, right off the top of my head. So Google says, let's let's do a Google search, okay? Just I always love to go to the Oracle of Google, the all powerful, all knowing Google. Source of the fount of all information, right? So psychology, if I could spell psychology of the color red. Let's do this, right? And one of the first things that pops up is let's try this one. Verywellmind.com. Verywellmind.com. In color psychology, red provokes the strongest emotions of any color. Okay? And I want you, as as I shortly will, go through this really fast. I'm I'm not gonna. I know this is a. I I I can't sit through this thing myself, guys, without my stomach churning. So I'm gonna run through this uh, speech really fast to try to hit the highlights. What's the actual messaging? This is obvious propaganda. Okay. You have to have your head six feet deep in a hole. Um, covered with sunflowers and rainbows in order to uh, not see that this is blatant propaganda and they want to provoke you. They want to invoke an emotion, an emotional response. And obviously, just from the what happened on Twitter the following week, a few days after, they were successful, right? Now think of the messaging, and I don't know if you've already heard this speech. I I just recently actually sat down and listened to what Dark Brando was saying. But think of the uh, context, right? The context is key, right? First, the emotion, right? I mean, this this dark set with these shadow figures, these shadow people. Brandon standing up there, flailing his arms around with this dark, dark red backdrop. Red, right? I'm going to start again. In color psychology, red provokes the strongest emotions of any color. While cool colors like green and blue are generally considered peaceful and calming, red is considered the warmest and most contradictory of the colors. In fact, this fiery hue has more opposing emotional associations than any other color. Red is linked to passion and love. Let me see if it says much more. Yeah, there's an obvious reason why. Danger and warning, and I think this one applies. Thanks to its long wavelength, red is one of the most visible colors in the color spectrum, second only to yellow. Its ability to instantly grab people's attention is the reason why it's often used to warn people of impending danger. Think stop signs, sirens, fire engines, and red traffic lights, okay? This is just the basic, you know, baby's milk uh, version of the psychology around color and why I think this is relevant to uh, Biden's propaganda speech there. At Independence Hall, I'll get to that shortly as well. That's as well symbolic. People tend to associate red with negative danger-bearing emotions. This could be because the color of fire, blood, sometimes poisonous, 
or dangerous animals. So yeah, this is something that's been, and it says excitement, energy. This is something that's been, you know, for generations, you know, thousands and thousands of thousands, no matter how long you think the earth has existed, how old the earth is, blood. You know, we're one of the few mammals, I'll get to this other article, that uh, perceives the color red. And just me living up in the mountains, and I know you're already having a hard time taking me seriously, but bear with me. This is, this applies. Big picture here. Just living in the mountains, every, every, every time um, winter comes around, boom, fall colors, right? Everybody's talking already about it should be a good fall season in Colorado. You know, the, the aspens changing. Um, we have little shrubs that are bright, bright orange, red. Sometimes the aspens themselves will have this beautiful hunter's orange color. And these are warning signs. That's the way I see it, living up here in the, in the high Rockies. If I were, you know, let's use our imaginations here a little bit, as hard as that might be with this big triangle on my forehead. Uh, living up here in the mountains, if, if, if I just try to put myself in the place of, you know, the early settlers, even way back, you know, the uh, tribal people who inhabited this land, that would be, right, your sign. There's your sign. Time to get ready. Time to prepare. So it's a, it's a warning sign, you know, cold weather is on its way. Time to prepare, right? Things are changing. The leaves are no longer green. It's no longer peaceful. This, the days are getting shorter and the nights are getting gradually cooler. Everything is changing, warning, right? Time to prepare for a coming, as Biden would put it, dark winter. Uh, and so that's just basic human ingrained psychology over the years. And uh, I keep, I'm, I'm keeping this thing on. I'm kind of starting to like it. I so see, yeah, I found this article and I thought this was really interesting, actually. I just started reading this. It's from BBC. Um, How color red warps the mind. There they got some luscious lips, right? Luscious, luscious lips. And this is from David Robson. 31st August, uh, 2014. Red is perhaps the most manipulative color, influencing everything from your behavior in the workplace to your love life. Again, the most manipulative color, they say. Why do you suppose Biden would use that color so prominently, or Biden's handlers, you know, the whole stage set crew, design crew? um, Why do you think these, these masters of propaganda, right, on the American political stage would use this particular color in this particular context, this message at this particular time. Let's just read a few real quick, a few um, highlights. And again, this guy kind of starts off in a similar, although he might have a different idea of the age of the earth and everything, me being a biblical Christian. Let's just, uh, let's just see what nuggets we can pull out of this article. We can never know what was going on through our ancestors' minds tens of thousands of years ago when, this, when they first picked up a natural crayons and began painting their bodies. But it is perhaps significant that they chose a rich red ochre, a color of our blood, and a vivid reminder of life and death. And there is like this, uh, and they, they get into the same psychology today, shades of uh, scarlet are likened or linked with power aggression and sex okay now obviously biden wasn't this wasn't a come on speech right i don't think he wants to sniff too many magas hairs hair but uh i think a power and aggression are definitely in there aren't they if you listen to the tone of the speech and how he's painting a certain segment of society as the enemy of the state um from vermilion of the british queen's royal regalia to the gaudy neon of Amsterdam's red light district. And those associations might not be coincidence. A new branch of science called color psychology has found that red can have a profound influence on our mood, perceptions, and actions. Wearing red can even change your psycho- or your physiology and balance of hormones 
and alter your performance at a football match. So what is it about shades of ruby, crimson, and scarlet that makes them so potent? Warning sign, like I just read. There's no doubt that our perception of red coincides with one of the most important events in evolutionary history. Let me get into the yeah, um, evolution and all that. Mammals, uh, dogs fail to differentiate between red and green. But as our early primate ancestors were adapted to life in the jungle, they evolved a new kind of cell in the retina that allowed them to pick out the bright red fruit from amongst the foliage. Um, and then it talks about how it led to different social signaling. Red color um, caused the blood pumping near the surface of the skin. Important sign of dominance in many primates. Monkeys. It shows this guy. Man. He's a good looker, isn't he? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, people's faces blush if they have any... Any, uh... If they're capable of blushing, you know. Minus most politicians, of course, but it was only it was only in 2004 that two psychologists, Russell Hill and Robert Barton, at the University of Durham, began to wonder whether humans might react in a similar way. Although these are the primates, we don't tend to flush a vivid, inflamed red like a mandrill, a monkey above. We do sometimes burn up with anger, so. The sight of red clothes could perhaps carry associations of aggression and dominance. <laughs> aggression and dominance, okay? Think of what they're trying to, what kind of emotional response, reaction they're trying to provoke. Particular, particularly from their political enemies, right? In this left-right controlled opposition paradigm. Uh, so they did a, uh, let's see here, Dominance Hill were struck for, Hill and Barton were stuck for ways to investigate the idea. However, until 2004, the Olympics gave them the perfect opportunity in combat sports like boxing, taekwondo, athletes uh, randomly assigned either red or blue kits, allowing the scientists to compare the same athlete's performance when they were wearing different colors. You can see these guys duking it out. One's red, right? Crips in the bloods. One's blue. Democrat, Republican. Blue, red. Anybody seeing the picture here? Yes, they love using these little um, dialectics. Posing opposites. And so it says, uh, tracking their progress in the Olympics. Throughout the games, Hill found that those assigned the red kits were 5% more likely to win their bout than the blues. Simply wearing red doesn't turn you into an excellent competitor, says Hill, but it helps tip the balance between winning and losing when people are fairly evenly matched. This first study in Scarlet triggered a host of other experiments, finding similar results in football penalty shooters, for instance. They are less likely to score if the goalie is wearing red. That's interesting. And again, that's one of those things in your mind that's, that's, that's uh, you know, in that back part of the brain, that subconscious, that you don't necessarily identify consciously that it's affecting you, but it is. So again, the dark, the dark Brandon speech with the red backdrop. How did it affect people's moods, right? Soon, color psychology was a credible scientific field in its own right. That paper was really responsible for this resurgence in interest in color and its possible effects, says Andrew Elliott of University of Rochester in New York State. Um, and so it goes on, um, the exact um, reason for the effects remains a matter of debate. Elliott points to studies showing that people where red feel more dominant themselves, trigger, triggering an increased heart rate and testosterone boost. I, I seriously doubt that was the case with Brando, but I think it's more like those observing who it was intended for. That could improve their performance, or red might intimidate the competitor in the same way that less dominant mandrels may avoid approaching their leaders with crimson faces, as I had earlier the deep voice um, in the same way that less dominant okay da, da, da. 
If you see red, you'll feel fear and your lower status and your testosterone will drop, says Elliot. Alternatively, it might have been down to the referees. One German team manipulated videos to change the kits of the Taekwondo players before showing them the professional referees. Simply changing colors changed the way uh, experienced referees were scoring bouts, Hill says. Whoever was wearing red won the referee's favor. That's interesting, because I've heard of the opposite. You know, never buy a red car, like especially a cherry red car, because the cop's always going to spot you, you know, ahead of any other cars driving by. Danger, danger. Pull that guy over. Interesting. Uh, and then if this... If, this always fascinates me, this topic, as you may know, listening to me on a regular basis, as you must. Look at the pyramid. Look at the pyramid. Okay. Away from the sports hall, similar thought process, processes could have led to your downfall in a casino playing with red poker chips seem to make people bet more than those using blue or white tiles. Perhaps... Because they seem like the chips of winners. Hmm. And here we go. Here's the symbology, right? The biblical symbology. And that's also from a biblical perspective. Kind of what I thought. Hmm. From Independence Hall. A Catholic president with the uh, Pope on his desk in the Oval Office following Laudato Si... The encyclical uh, for more world government under the guise of environmental safeguards and whatnot, climate change. The Scarlet Harlot is in power, even at Independence Hall, and is in control of this president. That was the first thing that popped in my mind. That's as deep as I'll go into that topic. Let's see what they say. Perhaps the most studied effect concerns the shades associated with desire, seduction, and sin. A link that can be seen in everything from the scarlet whore of Babylon, of which they'll never tip you off to who that stands for, according to the historical record and all the major Protestants. The woman sits on seven hills in Rome, the oldest globalist institution on earth nobody talks about. The Vatican. Uh, according to uh, Chris D. Berg's Lady in Red, a string of experiments by Elliot and others, colleagues, and other colleagues have all confirmed that men and women are both rated as being more attractive when wearing red compared to other shades. And waitresses tend to get bigger tips. Uh, from male customers, uh, wearing a red t-shirt can also increase females' hitchhikers' chances of getting a ride. Yada, yada, yada. Um, so yeah, which one's more attractive, guys? I'd say this one looks a little more trustworthy, right? This one, I don't know. I don't know if you'd want to bring that one home to mama, would you? Anyway, um, red herrings, color psychology, robust enough to, so yeah, just ending thought. The perception of red has evolved in such important events and experiences, says Elliot. Red is the color of a ripe fruit, as I talked about earlier. The angry face crossed from you, the person showing sexual arousal. In this way, it, it will always be associated with survival with connotations and influences that run as deep as the blood in our veins. With connotations and influences that run as deep as the blood in our veins. Perhaps we are only confirming what our ancestors realized when they first started painting their bodies. There is no other color like it. And so, running through our veins, you know, um, just before this speech, Biden made mention of blood in the streets. So this was just literally, what, two days before his uh, crimson scarlet speech. Um, let's see what this one says. Get all these ads off my screen. Okay, sweet. 
Biden calls out GOP members warning of blood in the street if Trump is prosecuted. I've been saying a while now, you know, I don't see Trump ever seeing any jail time. But you sure as hell will and already have seen a lot of his supporters face jail time. Haven't you? In fact, I think there's a local, let me look it up, Colorado man. Jan 6, 10 years this guy gets. 10 years for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And kind of led, you could make the argument, like a lamb to the slaughter, right? With no presidential pardons for any of these guys. Yeah, sentence record, this was just nine days ago as well. Same timing as the uh, red speech. Ex-NYPD officer sentenced to a record 10 years for January 6th riot. I guess that's him. Yeah, Thomas Webster's. Longest so far among uh, roughly 250 people who have been punished. Yes, if you're curious, I still have a pyramid on my head. I'm trying to make a point, and that yes, that is a joke. Very dry English joke. Okay, so maybe it was a different guy. Says this uh, Colorado man, uh, Daniel Michael Morrissey, was handed a 45 day sentence and three years of probation. So, you know, they're making it known that this is no no, this is not acceptable political behavior. Okay, guys? And, uh, right, so I just took you through the color psychology there. Fascinating stuff, wasn't it? Okay, I can't take this any longer. I gotta get this thing off my head. <sighs> okay. Where were we? Where were we? See if this next article applies at all to the topic at hand. I thought it did. This is from The Guardian. Um, August of 2022, not too long ago. US politics. More than 40% of Americans think civil war likely within a decade. Of course, the dreaded January 6th event. I'm going to skip all the way down to the actual uh, poll. Uh, you know, it says fears of political violence have grown since January 6th, of course. Most be experts believe a full scale armed conflict like the American Civil War of 1861 to 65 remains unlikely. But many fear an increase of jagged political division and explicitly political violence, particularly as Republican politicians who support Trump's lie about the electoral fraud run for Congress, governors, mansions, and key state elections posts. So here you have it. You have anybody who might want to participate, right, as a Trump supporter, Trying to get into political office is the one of the biggest threats of uh, political violence in this nation right now, according to this British article. This month, this uh, this month, Rachel Kleinfeld, a specialist in civil conflict at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, told the Guardian. Countries with democracies and governments as strong as America's do not fall into civil war. But if our institutions weaken, the story could be different. Yes, yeah, so we need these, uh, you know, iron-fisted institutions, you know, ever fully funded in order to safeguard the actual risk of, you know, an actual people's movement. And God forbid what uh, Jefferson said that the... Uh, if a government is destructive of these aims, then it is the right of the citizenry to abolish and replace that government. But as long as we have, you know, in these democracies, quote unquote, strong governments, um, with strong institutions, we're all good. Okay, so here at the poll, in the poll by uh, YouGov and The Economist, 
Ross Childone, of course. 65% of all respondents said political violence had increased since the start of 2021. And I wonder where they get this perception from the media, of course. Slightly fewer, 62%, thought political violence would increase in the next few, few years, you know, give or take. Participants were also asked, uh, looking ahead to the next 10 years, how likely do you think it is that there will be a civil war in this country? And among all U.S. citizens, 43% said civil war was at least somewhat likely. Among strong Democrats and independents, that figure was 40%. But among strong Republicans, 54% said civil war was at least somewhat likely. <clears throat> and you can just hear the uh, in this article, which is, of course, you know, another, just like an ABC, CBS, NBC, BBC of uh, Great Britannia, of course, the Red Coast, speaking of red. <laughs> Idiots that would line up in red and get mowed down by, you know, Americans that were actually a little savvy about warfare and, uh, guerrilla warfare in particular, and you know, maybe wearing uniforms that weren't bright red in the green landscape. In any case, uh, I thought this was fascinating because at the very end of this article, you know, it's like this pitch, you know, with so much on the line, journalism is relentless, uh, reports of the truth and covers injustice, exposes misinformation, is absolutely essential. So part of their sales pitch, they say, in recent polls, American voters ranked threats to democracy as the most important issue facing the country at a time of climate collapse, inflation, and a pandemic. Again, stoking these fears and divisions. The country is seeing a dizzying number of assaults on democracy, from draconian abortion bans to record number of book bans. Politicians who spread lies and sought to delegitimize the 2020 election are pursuing offices that will put them in control of the country's election machinery. Man, that's a wordy one, isn't it? Mouthful. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court is enforcing its own agenda on abortion, guns, and environmental protections, often in opposition of public opinion. So this BBC article literally after talking about the threat to uh you know civil war in this country goes on to exploit the same divisions at the very end as a sales pitch of course right because they are instrumental the enemy of the people um corporate paid for sponsored fake news media is a key instrument in this uh sowing of continual strife division divide and conquer you know Keep up, prop up that left-right paradigm. Keep the people distracted to the point where they think, you know, our neighbor down the street is a bigger threat, is a bigger enemy than those who actually sit in high office that are actually the real enemies, the real danger to our uh, liberties. God-given, God-endowed from birth. What makes us human? How God designed us, how God created us to be free will agents walking on this beautiful creation that he created for us. Make sure you tune in next time for part two of the Dark Brandon Red Speech when I'll go over in detail what was actually said. Thanks everyone for watching. God bless. It's Nightwatch Nate. Signing out. If you're vaccinated, you're not going to be hospitalized, you're not going to be an ICU unit, and you're not going to die. You're okay. You're not going to. You're not going to get COVID if you have these vaccinations. They're killing people. They don't, look. The only pandemic we have is among the unvaccinated. And that's, and they're, and they're killing people.